Hello, Blue Collar Preppers. This is Aaron Pellet. This is the fourth unboxing video I've done for you so far. Hopefully you're all enjoying this series. I apologize today if I seem a little bit sniffly. I have allergies and the pine pollen here in Florida is driving me crazy. So hopefully you'll forgive me for that. So without any more ado, let us begin the unboxing of the February 2015 box. So, as usual, we have the contents list, which I will keep over here for my notes. I can refer to them. And here's the skill challenge, which is available only to subscribers, and I don't publicize how to get there because, well, if you want to know about it, you're going to have to pay for it. So, let's see what's in the uh, goodie list this month. Now, I expected, because this was February, that there would be some attempt at uh, Valentine's Day. And I really didn't know how well Valentine's Day would work with prepping and survival. Um, maybe something involving the survival uses of condoms, perhaps. But uh, fortunately, Creek didn't do that. And the theme of this month seems to be trees. So the very first item on the list here is a bottle of pure maple syrup from Vermont. It's listed as being $5. And uh, the reason for its inclusion, I realize it, it's possibly a little bit silly, but as he says, it's like a natural energy drink filled with vitamins, nutrients, and minerals. And uh, late winter and early spring is the best time to tap trees because that's when the sap is flowing. Maple sap does not require purification and can be consumed in a survival situation to rehydrate. So, okay. Continuing on in that vein, if you're going to get syrup, you need something to get the syrup with. And this is what's known as a, a spile. I've never seen one of these before, but then again, I live in the south, and I understand this is quite common in the north. So this is plastic, and the way it works is that you find a tree that um, produces sap that you can turn into syrup, and you drill a hole in the bark, and then you put this in there, and then you hook a pail or a canteen or something over it, and it will drip down, and you'll collect it. This spile is listed as three dollars. It's uh, I know it looks kind of cheap, but the the plastic seems to be of okay quality. I wouldn't put a whole lot of weight on it, but it should survive banging around inside of a bug out bag. But here's the thing: how do you know uh, which trees provide usable sap? Well, the, the real gem of this box, as far as I'm concerned is this book here called Winter Tree Finder. Now, prior to this, all of the identification books I had seen involve identifying a tree by the leaves. And in the winter, when the leaves die, that's going to be difficult. So this booklet here, it's basically a series of flowcharts. And so it asks you questions. You know, is, is the bud enclosed in more than two scales? Well, then you go here. And if the buds are at least four times as long as thick, go to here. And it's, I think it's just a tremendous amount of value in a very easy to use format. There's lots of clear line illustrations. And it's small enough that it'll fit into a cargo pocket or well, if it'll fit in your cargo pocket, it'll definitely fit in your bucket bag. And this is listed as being worth $6. I think its value is actually more than that. And there are more in the series if you are interested in getting them. So I highly recommend that you, you look into them. It, uh, it's called Winter Tree Finder by May Thylgard Watts and Tom Watts. 
You can probably find these on Amazon. Now, this is one of the big expensive items. Uh, this is a Molly bottle holder. I'm going to try and zoom out here. It comes all squashed. So it's just a, a canvas bag that you can put a water bottle in. Alright, I'm having some difficulties because last week I cut the heck out of my finger. I just cut a chunk out of it. So it's hard for me to do a lot of manipulating. There we go. All right, so if you have a Nalgene bottle, that'll fit right in there. And you've got this pocket here where you can put things like fire starting materials or a can opener, some food, some tinder, things like that. You've got the molly webbing here. You've got some Velcro up top. came with a strap that you can strap to either side so you can wear it over your shoulder. There's a clip here that you can clip onto a hook on a backpack, and you've got more molly straps here. There's just a whole lot of utility in this. I, I have one. I use it in my bug out bag. It's nice to have two. I don't know if I'm going to find a use for it or if I'll just give it to a family member, but this is definitely worth having. I know. I'm so coordinated. Next up. You've got the uh, Batuka battery case. And I don't know if you would consider this one or two. They fit together, but they can also come apart, like you just saw. Now, this will hold both AA and AAA batteries. And I, it, it doesn't come with batteries. I put mine in there. So you can see, if you had just AA, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And those are the AAAs. I think you could maybe fit six in there, five or six. And so the niftiness for this, first of all, batteries get loose, they rattle around, they get to the, they fall down to the bottom of your pack. That doesn't help you. Secondly, this isolates the leads so that you don't have to worry about the batteries bumping into each other and discharging and running down their charge or worse, discharging and creating a spark and starting a fire. Because you really don't want a fire starting in your bug out bag. I don't think that's really all that likely with these type of batteries. It's really, really likely with 9 volts. So if you have any 9 volt batteries in your bags at all, for crying out loud, cover the leads with electrical tape or something. So this is nifty. It costs $6 for these, so I guess $3 each. The Pocket Bellows Survival Starting Tool. I am impressed by this because it's both brilliant and WTF. So, it's a collapsible piece of metal, it's hollow, and it expands. And, well, that's out of camera range. So the idea is... Well, fire needs oxygen, and sometimes when you're getting a fire started, you have to blow on it. Well, instead of having to get your face down to the fire and huffing and puffing, you put this end in your mouth and this end at the base of the fire, and then you you blow, and so that should be a more efficient way of feeding the fire, and you can aim it and you don't get out of breath. And so in that regard, it's quite useful and nifty. On the other hand, when you think about it, all this is is a pointer or an antenna with the end cut off and hollowed out. And they're selling this for $12. That's brilliant on their part. Um, anyone who's got uh, an old antenna sitting around can probably make one of these for far less. But I have to admire their ingenuity and... I personally wouldn't have thought of using this. What I've been using, 
um, I found an old ballpoint pen, and I unscrewed the bottom. And I, I've been using that in my bag. But this is metal, and my ballpoint pen was plastic, so this has a lot more durability. And it's long. I mean, that's... foot and a half? I'm just eyeballing it. So you, know, you can get a lot more use for it. I don't know if I'd consider it $12 worth of use, but still, I, I am impressed at their ingenuity and just the balls it takes to market that. The Apocabox patch, there's always a patch or a sticker in one of these things. You can see it's got the rules of three. It's listed as $5. I, I really don't have anything more to say about that. This is a knife. It's the OpenL folder number six. It's listed as $12. And it's, I think it's made in France. Let me check. Yes, it's made in France since 1890. And it looks very old fashioned. So in that regard, if it's part of your everyday carry, it might not attract as much attention as a knife that looks tactical. Now, I initially didn't like this knife because it didn't have a lock. That's just a recipe for disaster. But I, I read the manual, and apparently, see this collar here? This collar rotates. And so if you rotate it, it'll, it, it'll lock. And now that blade isn't going anywhere. Rotate it back. Fold the knife down. You can rotate it again, keep it from opening. So that's pretty cool. Not a bad little knife. It's got a, an old-fashioned feel to it. Very useful. Stick it in a pocket. They say it's worth $12. Eh, I'm not going to argue that. These next items, if anyone watched Survivor on television, you're going to immediately recognize what these are and how they work. These are seamless survival scarves, and there are two of them. One in this tribal kind of pattern, and one in a traditional bandana kind of pattern. And they work exactly like survivor tribal buffs. They're made of a, of a stretchy material, and it's just, it's a tube. And so you can use it for a variety of things. You can use it as a hat, you can use it as a balaclava, you're know, wrapping around your, your neck and your mouth, you can pull it up over your ears. Just a lot of things you can do with it. So these are listed as $24 each, or I'm sorry, $24 total, $12 each. This is something that Creek invented. It's called the speed block. And this isn't going to make any sense to you unless you have any experience using a fire bow or possibly you know, a drill. The way it works is that you know, you've got the bow and that uh, wraps around the spindle, but you need something, you need a bearing block to hold the spindle down so that it maintains contact and friction with the notched board where you're trying to work the ember. And usually that's done with a stone that has a little curved depression in it. Well, Creek has done this. This is made out of wood, and there's... it. Well, okay. That's metal. I don't know exactly how it works. This is... We're right at the limits of my ignorance here, but it moves very smoothly. He's tried to make it as frictionless as possible, he says. Now, I don't know if that's true, but it feels good in my hand, and I can definitely see how it would be a lot easier to bear down with this than with just a stone or a piece of wood. So if you have the fire bow from the very first Apocabox in August 2014, put this with it. This will improve its use tremendously.
This is, and I'm not going to go in because I don't want people to be able to read the code without having bought the box. But this is a free chapter download from Creek's book, Build the Perfect Bug Out Survival Skills. And so you enter the code, and you can download chapter on how to build fire. Now, there's no value. Well, okay, technically there's a value given. Creek's being ser silly here, and he says the value is priceless. Finishing up. Let me just get that out of the way. I have no idea what I'm doing. A luminous fire striker. Okay, it is basically a ferro rod with the striker. You've seen this before. It's got some of the typical doodads where it's got a little ruler on it, and it's got a bottle opener. Really what makes this one different from the others is that this portion glows in the dark which is a good feature to have if you're trying to build a fire in a survival situation and you drop your ferro rod, you want to be able to find it in the dark. So that's listed as $10. And finally, this last element ties in with the skill challenge. And this one had the biggest WTF factor for me, and then I read and it made perfect sense. Pocketbox branded guitar picks. And I know you're all saying, what? Well, I read the explanation here. These picks are made out of celluloid. Celluloid is flammable. And so what you have here is a very stable bit of tinder. I mean, it's, it's, it's waterproof. And it's very easy to find. You can just stick it in a pocket. No one's really going to think twice. And heck, if you play the guitar, play the banjo, you can actually use it as a pick for the strings. But in a survival situation, and that's the skills challenge for this month, you take this striker and one of these, and then, of course, you're going to build a nest here. And you're going to start a fire using a ferro rod and a guitar pick. I think that's cool, just for the novelty value alone. I never would have thought to have used a guitar pick. And according to Creek, he's the one who came up with this and he invented it. I, I don't have any proof to say otherwise. So, sure. I'll let the man claim that, because that's just neat. So, if we add up all of these items, and we'll just... I will arbitrarily assume that the chapter download is worth a dollar. Then that would make the contents of the February box come out to $120. And as I have said before, with shipping, each Apocalypse box comes out to about $60. So this one, you get a two-for-one value. Whether or not you decide that's worth it is up to you. I have I have enjoyed all of the Apocalypse boxes, and I I think that the quality is actually improving with each box, and I find myself really looking forward to what I'm going to get uh, next time, in the next two months. So the next Apocalypse box is in April, and I don't know maybe there'll be something uh, April Fools involved, something slightly silly. Maybe it'll just be spring related. I don't know. But I am looking forward to it because I can find room in my various kits, my bug out bag, my get home bag. I can find uses for these. And the things that I can't find uses for, I can give to family members. So all of this stuff is going to get used. I think I am getting a tremendous value for my money. And if you decide to subscribe, I hope you feel you're getting that value as well. Please leave a comment if you have subscribed. I'd really like to know what other people think about it. So if you have any questions or comments, I encourage you to leave a comment either here on this video or on one of my blogs, Blue Collar Prepping or Lurking Rhythmically. Please let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and you have a great weekend. Bye.